here and welcome to Ardry Kell's first ever NCTC virtual showcase live streaming event brought to you right here on our YouTube channel. We are so happy to have you here. My name is Miss Rolf and I am the new theater teacher at Ardry Kell High School and I am so excited to present to you the work that myself and the advanced theater class has been putting together for you. Over the past couple of weeks, these students have written, directed, produced, and edited the work that you are about to see this evening. They've been hard at work, um, and they've put so much effort and creativity into this work, and they are so excited to share it with an audience. Um, under normal circumstances, that audience would be in a theater, in the seats, with all of the kids together, because of that fact and things being different this year, we ask if you are able to give the link in the description below a click to donate what you can to the theater program here at Ardry Kell. Um, in lieu of ticket sales, uh, we are looking at this to ensure that the theater program continues on and that we are able to continue to bring artistic works and productions to you virtually. So if you are able, please give that link a click and donate what you can is going to a great cause to get these kids performing in these unprecedented times. So with that, please enjoy the show. Please give us a donation and spread the word. Thank you so much. Enjoy.
off you, Ben. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm fine. You can talk to us, you know that, right? I don't need to talk to you. I have a therapist for that. I never pegged you as type for therapy. Of course I'm not. You know me better than that. My mom signed me up for sessions. I go meet with this guy once a week and then I write in a diary for him. You know, he reads it all. It's very intrusive. Well, I'm glad you're talking to someone. I'm going to the memorial today. Do you want to come? No. No, I'm good. It'll be good for you. Closure and all that. I'm not going back there. Come on, Jess. She'd want you to be there. You don't know what she'd want. We were all close. We know what you're going through. No, no, you don't know what I'm going through. She was your friend. She's my... She was my sister. She still is. <sighs> no, you weren't there. I can't go back, I can't. I can't be reminded of what I did. It was an accident. No, I drove the car. I crashed, it was my fault. for me. I've never been one for journaling, but here goes. Dear diary, I don't want to talk about it. July 9th, 2019. Dear Dr. Brown, I'm not writing Dear Diary anymore. I don't want a diary, and even if I did, this isn't a diary. It's the pen and paper equivalent of a camera. You're watching me. This whole stream of consciousness thing is total BS. You just want me to spill my guts for you to dissect them. And by the way, the no crossing things out rule is extremely annoying. I don't want to write anything down, I want to be left alone. Just me and my thoughts, in my own mind, the way I normally deal with shit. Hey, we haven't talked to you in a bit. How are you doing? I'm good. 
good good or just good? Uh, just good. We're still here if you need anything. Yeah, I know. How's the diary? Ryan! No, no, it's fine. We can talk about it. The diary's fine. <laughs> it's more of an inconvenience than something that's actually helping me. But... Well, are you using it like you're supposed to be using it? Or are you using it the just way? What's that supposed to mean? You know, using sarcasm to cover up how you're actually feeling. I don't do that. Yes, you do. <laughs> what are you, my mom? No, <laughs> oh, no, we're joking. Kind of. Well, I'm doing my best. Well, it doesn't seem like it. I've never been through something like this. I'm dealing with it the only way I know how. By locking yourself in your room and ignoring your best friend? I'm not ignoring you. Well, I don't want to talk to people right now. I just want to write in this stupid journal and visit my stupid therapist and pretend like my sister isn't dead. You can't ignore it, Jess. God, you're not my grief counselor. You're my friends. Don't tell me how to deal with my shit. You're not dealing with your shit. I can't anymore. I, I can't. You can't what? Nothing. I can't even cry anymore. No matter how hard I try, I just can't. Oh, my sister's dead, and I can't even cry about it. I mean, at first, it was like I couldn't stop. I wanted to so badly, and I mean, I was crying nonstop for days. And then the funeral happened, and I came back home, and I saw her picture, and I cried again, and then I stopped, and now... I can't start. It's like a dam. I, I feel like I need to, but I can't. And I get the pressure and my eyes start stinging and my, my throat gets sore, but and the tears never come. I'm so sorry. Yeah. July 17th, 2019. Dear Dr. Brown, I've been informed that my entries are too sarcastic and not long enough. Thanks for that. Now my parents are on my ass about actually completing these journals. But fine, fine. I'll actually write this time. Not because I want to, but because I have to. Here goes. Tomorrow will mark exactly one month since Dylan died. I'm not ready. I can barely sleep without dreaming of that night, so who knows what kind of shit my brain is going to pull tomorrow. I don't know how to move past this. I know I'm not the only one who's struggling, but I can't relate to anyone else. They're just coping with the loss, but I'm... I'm coping with the guilt, too. No matter how many times people say that I'm wrong, I can't get it out of my head that it was my fault. Because it was... She told me to slow down. She knew it was dangerous. I I just never know when to stop. Dylan didn't deserve to die. It should have been me. The letters and the flowers and the memorial. It should have been for me. I would give anything to switch our places. She deserved to live more than I did.
Okay. A little powder. Mm. Is this for highlighter? Ooh. Um, yeah. it can be. I use it for contour. What are you These Swedish are open. Can I still mm -hmm. eat them? Which one? <laughs> I'm eating them. They were open. Say one for me. That's my favorite. I just or don't eat all my candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. I thought it was free real estate. <laughs> okay. Well, what are you doing? My makeup. Put my phone. Hold on. Are we recording? You can be alright. It looks good. Hey. <laughs> Oh, more candy. Hey, mom just bought this for me. Is it like cute? I really don't know. I like it. Not really. Oh, yes, it is. It's cute. It's just not my personal style. Give me the hat. I think it looks great. Oh, the color is really cute on me. Okay, turn off the camera. Not again. Dylan. Part of me wants to believe this is all a bad dream. That I'll wake up and laugh at how ridiculous this all is. That I'll get out of bed, smell bacon and eggs from the kitchen. And I'll, I'll go downstairs and see you making breakfast with mom while dad sits at the table drinking coffee. I can imagine it so vividly. You'd have that stupid grin on your face and offer me a plate of food. But I know that's not the case. Words will never be able to describe how much I love you and how much my heart squeezes when I realize just how much I miss you. It pains me knowing that you'll never graduate. You would have been halfway to college by now. You'll never get married. I'll never meet your future husband, be an aunt to your children and babysit them while you have a night out. We'll never grow old together and look back on our childhood and think, wow, we were so young, we still had so much life left to live. I never realized how much you meant to me until you were gone. I spent my whole life looking up to you so much that I forgot how to look at myself. Without you, I feel incomplete. To be honest, I don't think I'll ever feel complete again. Losing you was the hardest thing I've ever had to experience, but I know now that I'll do my best to live my life to the fullest, because I know that's what you would have wanted for me. I've been thinking about you a lot lately, and I realize that there really is a difference between living and living well. I can't just walk through life without a purpose. I need to learn how to live for myself, not everyone else. So from now on, I'm gonna try to live well. And although you won't be here to live well with me, I can live well for you. Because not having you with me is hard. 
It's been hard from the moment you breathed your last breath, but I think some doors were never meant to be opened again. I miss you every second of every day. And while I don't fully forgive myself for driving the car that night, I'm working on it. Because I know that's what you would have wanted. I will always remember you. Your smile, your laugh, the way you cared for everyone around you, the way you cared for me. I love you. I always will. Goodbye, Dylan.